Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at atomic orbitals and subshells. We're going to talk about what atomic orbitals are, the property of electron spin, and why this is important with orbitals, and have a look at the shapes of atomic orbitals within the S, P, and D subshells, the general structure of an atom, electron configurations, and first ionization energies have been covered in separate videos, Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about atomic orbitals, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Atoms are made up of three types of subatomic particle, protons, electrons, and neutrons. Protons have a relative charge of positive one, electrons negative one, and neutrons have no charge. Inside an atom, there is a very small, dense region of positive charge made up of protons and neutrons called the nucleus. The nucleus is surrounded by negatively charged electrons that exist within specific energy levels or shells, labelled as principal quantum numbers, starting with the number 1 for the energy level closest to the nucleus. As you move away from the nucleus of an atom, more electrons can fit around it, meaning energy levels further from the nucleus can contain more electrons than energy levels closer to the nucleus. The first energy level, with a principal quantum number of 1, can hold 2 electrons. The second, with a principal quantum number of 2, can hold 8 electrons. The third, with a principal quantum number of 3, can hold 18 electrons. As they have a negative charge, electrons are electrostatically attracted to the positive charge of an atom's nucleus. The closer an electron is to the nucleus, the stronger this force of attraction, and the more stable and lower in energy the electron is. This means electrons that are in energy levels closer to the nucleus are lower in energy and more stable than electrons in energy levels further from the nucleus. Recap done? Let's go! Electrons are very small and move very fast. They never stay still and are constantly moving. Because of this, it is virtually impossible to know exactly where an electron is inside an atom at any one moment in time. Instead, we have to predict where an electron is most likely to be. Because electrons have something called wave-particle duality, we can treat them as waves and actually calculate the probability of finding them in certain areas around an atom's nucleus. <laughs> now, these calculations are a bit, well, horrendous and beyond the scope of study at this level. However, the results of these calculations tell us where electrons are likely to be found inside an atom. These regions of space can have very different shapes and are called atomic orbitals. When drawn out in three dimensions, they represent a 90% probability that, if the orbital is occupied with an electron, the electron will be within that region of space. We can never know 100% where an electron is inside an atom, as it will be constantly moving. However, these orbital diagrams show where electrons are most likely to be found and can be used to show how multiple electrons can be arranged within an atom. Each atomic orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. This is due to a property electrons have called spin. Spin is a very abstract idea that doesn't really make sense in our everyday world. But as a simple model, if we imagine electrons as being very small particles moving through space, as they move they will also rotate or spin, just as a ball being thrown through the air will spin and rotate as it moves. There are only two ways the electron can spin, just like there are only two ways the ball can rotate. With something like a ball, we would usually say it is rotating clockwise, or anti-clockwise, but that depends which way you are looking at it and what you are comparing the rotation to, meaning we can't describe electron spin as clockwise or anti-clockwise. Instead, we describe the two possible ways electrons can spin as spin up and spin down, written as positive half and negative half, 
and shown on diagrams as a half arrow pointing up or down. Without getting too physics-y here, because electrons have a charge, as they spin, they generate a very weak magnetic field. You can kind of think of a spinning electron as being like a tiny bar magnet. Now, magnetic fields have a direction based on north and south. As a result, an electron that is spin up will have a magnetic field with an opposite direction to an electron that is spin down. Basically, it's like the tiny bar magnet gets flipped upside down if the spin of an electron changes. This all sounds very confusing, and at this level you won't ever be examined on it. However, it is really important, as if you take two electrons with opposite spins, their magnetic fields are opposite and cancel each other out. And this enables two electrons with opposite spin to exist in the same area, despite the fact that two negative charges will cause repulsion. Because of this, a maximum of two electrons are able to be in any one orbital. And this means as atoms fill up with electrons, extra electrons are forced to exist in other orbitals with different shapes that are often further away from the nucleus of the atom. The problem is, as electrons get further away from the nucleus, the strength of attraction between them and the nucleus decreases and as a result, their energy increases. They become less stable. Remember, two opposite charges being brought closer together get more stable and lower in energy. Two opposite charges moved further apart get less stable and higher in energy. Because electrons are constantly moving so quickly, however, they can't all be very close to the nucleus. There simply isn't enough space. Near the centre of an atom in the first energy level or shell, only one orbital can fit in this area nearest to the nucleus. Any more electrons in this area would simply get repelled and have to move further away from this first orbital, and are forced to form a new energy level. As a result of this, the first energy level in an atom contains only one orbital, holding a maximum of two electrons. The orbital is spherical shaped and is called an S orbital, in what is referred to as an S subshell. As you move further away from the nucleus and enter a new energy level, however, there is now more space available for other orbital shapes to exist. Because the new orbital shapes can be different, the electrons in them also have different energies, as they are slightly different distances from the nucleus. This means electrons in the same energy level can actually have slightly different energies. And as a result, we describe energy levels as containing subshells. These are effectively slightly different energy levels within an energy level. Really important for you to get this right. Electrons exist in orbitals that are in subshells within energy levels in an atom. For example, in the second energy level of an atom, the extra available space, compared to the first energy level, allows for another s orbital in an s subshell, as well as three new extra orbitals to exist. Due to their almost dumbbell-like shapes, these are slightly higher in energy than the s orbital in the s subshell, and so make up a subshell called the p subshell. The orbitals themselves are described as p orbitals. Each of the p orbitals has the exact same shape and energy, just with a different orientation in space. Effectively, each one points in a different direction, all at 90 degrees to each other. They are labelled as px, py and pz, based on the axes they lie in, x, y and z. The three p orbitals are arranged around the s orbital that is also in the second energy level. And, as a result, most of the orbital shape ends up just a little bit further away from the nucleus of the atom compared to the s orbital, making the electrons inside slightly higher in energy and less stable than the electrons in the s orbital. As the second energy level then has four orbitals in, 
one S orbital in the S subshell and three P orbitals in the P subshell, it can hold a maximum of eight electrons. Once these orbitals get filled up, any more electrons in the atom get repelled further away and form a new third energy level. This third energy level has even more space in it and can therefore fit more orbitals in than the second energy level. Specifically, the extra space available accommodates another S subshell and P subshell, as well as five new orbitals that make up what is called a D subshell and are described as D orbitals. The shapes of the d orbitals means they are slightly further away from the nucleus than the s and p orbitals in the third energy level, and as a result are slightly higher in energy. The third energy level then has an s subshell, p subshell and d subshell, or in other words one s orbital, three p orbitals and five d orbitals. This means it can hold a total of 18 electrons, as there are nine orbitals, each of which can have two electrons in. Surprise, surprise, the fourth energy level can fit even more orbital shapes in and has another subshell of f orbitals. Don't worry, we won't be looking at those in this video, however. Right, really important mini recap here. S subshells are found in every energy level in an atom. They contain only one spherical shaped orbital that is called an S orbital. As a result, an S subshell can hold a maximum of two electrons. P subshells contain three dumbbell shaped orbitals that are too big to fit into the first energy level, meaning only the second energy level and above has a P subshell in. The three orbitals in a P subshell are called P orbitals and are labelled as Px, Py and Pz. They all have the exact same shape and energy, only their orientations in space are different. A P subshell can hold a maximum of six electrons, two per P orbital. D subshells contain five orbitals that have different shapes, called D orbitals. The 5D orbitals are too big to fit into the first and second energy levels, meaning only the third energy level and above in an atom can contain D orbitals. A D subshell can hold a maximum of 10 electrons, 2 per D orbital. As different energy levels can fit different subshells in, each can hold a different maximum number of electrons. The first energy level in an atom can only fit an S subshell and as a result holds two electrons. The second energy level can fit another S subshell and a P subshell, meaning it can hold eight electrons. And the third energy level can fit another S subshell, another P subshell and a D subshell, giving a total of 18 electrons. You may have noticed that throughout this video I've made a point of referring to how the orbitals in S, P and D subshells all have slightly different energies to each other, even in the same energy level. We can show this using energy level diagrams with energy on the y-axis. As subshells get further away from the nucleus, the energy of the electrons in them increase. Each orbital within a subshell is shown as a short dash. For example, in the second energy level, electrons in the S subshell are lower in energy than electrons in the P subshell. Equally, for electrons in the third energy level, electrons in the P subshell are lower in energy than electrons in the D subshell. This is really important in chemistry, as electrons in atoms always want to be as stable as possible, meaning orbitals always get filled up in a specific way within an atom. This has been covered in a separate video about electron configurations. Check the links in the description below. It is the electrons in the outermost orbitals of atoms that determine how they react. This means elements with outermost electrons in the same type of subshell have similar properties and are grouped together in the periodic table, giving S block elements, P block elements, D block elements, and F block elements. So, to summarize, 
Atomic orbitals are regions of space within an atom where, if occupied, there is a 90% probability of finding an electron. As electrons are constantly moving very quickly, we can never know exactly where one electron will be at any one time, and we can only predict where it is likely to be. Electrons have a property of spin that gives them a very small magnetic field. The spin of an electron can be either spin up or spin down, each giving an electron a magnetic field with an opposite direction. As a result, two electrons with opposite spin can be in the same atomic orbital, meaning atomic orbitals can hold a maximum of two electrons. Each type of spin is represented with an up or down arrow. Electrons are negatively charged and repel each other, meaning only a limited number of orbitals can fit around a nucleus in a given energy level or shell. As distance from the nucleus increases, there is more available space, meaning more orbitals can fit and be arranged around the nucleus. Electrons in orbitals further from the nucleus are higher in energy than electrons in orbitals closer to the nucleus. As the further apart oppositely charged particles get from each other, the higher their energy. As orbitals in a given energy level or shell can have different shapes, they can also have slightly different energies and belong to what are called subshells. Different subshells have different types and numbers of orbitals in. S subshells are found in every energy level in an atom. They contain only one spherical shaped orbital that is called an S orbital. As a result, an S subshell can hold a maximum of two electrons. P subshells contain three dumbbell shaped orbitals that are too big to fit into the first energy level, meaning only the second energy level and above has a P subshell. The three orbitals in a p-subshell are called p-orbitals and are labelled as px, py and pz. They all have the exact same shape and energy, only their orientations in space are different. A p-subshell can hold a maximum of six electrons, two per p-orbital. D-subshells contain five orbitals that have different shapes, called d-orbitals. The five d orbitals are too big to fit into the first and second energy levels in an atom, meaning only the third energy level and above can contain d orbitals. A d subshell can hold a maximum of 10 electrons, two per d orbital. As different energy levels can fit different subshells in, each can hold a different maximum number of electrons. The first energy level in an atom can only fit an S subshell and as a result hold two electrons. The second energy level can fit another S subshell and a P subshell, meaning it can hold eight electrons. And the third energy level can fit another S subshell, another P subshell and a D subshell, giving a total of 18 electrons. The block an element belongs to in the periodic table describes the type of subshell the outermost electrons in an atom of that element are in. There is the S block, P block, D block and F block. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.